Hey, uh, I'm Poojita. I'm a developer in OpenSearch, and today I'll be walking you through how to set up and install uh, OpenSearch on your devices. This uh, we'll be going through like the OpenSearch core repo, which is essentially just the OpenSearch repository on GitHub. Uh, so as you can see, this is the website github.com open search project open search so within open search project there's a lot of other uh, repositories as well um, so this is for the core repository which is open search um, so for this for the machine that i'm using this is a amazon linux 2 machine uh, so it's just an ec2 instance that i spun up it's an m4 x large instance with around 100 gp of disk space and I've used like a PEM file that I've created earlier and I've just SSH to it. So I'll be showing you from the command line how to set up everything. Um, so yeah. Yeah, um, so for open search core, uh, essentially once you start looking down, you can see this is the readme file. So I would highly suggest that before you get started, you kind of go through all of this in order. Um, they might seem redundant, might seem obvious, but I think it really does help, especially because this will be, I guess for most of you the first time kind of coding in the open source community. So there's a lot of guidelines that we need to follow and a lot of it is mentioned in this. And as well as for you to set up like your first uh, pull request or how to go about things, there's a lot of very useful information in all of these. Um, so for now to set up and install, we'll be following the developer guide, um, which is here. So let's just go through it in order. Uh, at the beginning, fork open search project, open search and clone locally. Okay. So for forking it, you can see here. So if you click on fork, it will fork your own copy of open search project. Um, I already have my own fork. So let me just show you what it will look like. So if you see here, it'll show forked from open search project. And this is essentially how the link will always look like. It will be your GitHub uh, ID here, your GitHub handle and then open search. So essentially this is like your copy of open searches code. And why we fork stuff is so that you can always like pull in any changes that everyone is pushing to open search. And when you have made all of your developmental efforts, you can again merge them back in. Um, so yeah, so let's get started. So fork it and clone it locally. So for the purpose of this setup, my local would be this EC2 machine. So let's try it. Good clone. Okay, so git is not installed. So for this, uh, we'll just be doing a yum install git. You need to be root, okay? So sudo yum install it. Is this okay? Click Y for yes. Yeah. So now Git should be installed. We can check with Git version. Yeah, Git version 2.39. Okay. So now if we run that command again, Git clone. So now it'll be copying over all of the open search files into our local, which is our first step done. After that, we have a bunch of prerequisites. So we have Java 11, Java 14, and Java 17 that we need to set up. So we need to download and install the JDKs as well as set all of our environment variables to point to the right place where the JDK is installed. Um, so for this, as you can see here, um, I think this is the recommended source for you to download from, which is adoption. So we can see version 11. So Linux x64, this is my machine. So if you are on Mac or if you're on something else, you can always check those instead. Um, but this is the link. Click here to download. If I copy this link, I think I'll be able to 
download it directly onto my machine with wcat okay so this is the open search repo that we downloaded before and this is the jdk tar file so first unpack the tar file tar minus xvf open jdk okay so now it's unpacking jdk here so this is the path to the jdk folder that we want to set in our environment variables so if you do pwd this will give you a present working directory you have the jdk here so now we want to set java home sorry java home to be home is it to a user jdk and i think if we look at this we also need to set java 11 home so just the same thing 11 home yeah so now we can remove the tar file and do the same thing for java 14 and java 17 so if you go back hmm, java 17 here we go download copy this link Just the same process for Java 17 as well. Which will be Java 14. Hmm, it doesn't seem to be a Java 14 here. Okay, so for JDK 14. We go to adopt openjdk.net, which isn't exactly the same link that was given there, uh, but I couldn't find 14 on that. So if we look for openjdk14, jdk14, adopt openjdk14, um, we can just copy the link and do the same thing we did for the other two. So I think these are the three different versions that we need. Yeah, that seems about it. So now we've set all of the environment variables. If you do print env, you should be able to see here Java 14 home, Java home, Java 17 home, and where is Java 11? Yeah, Java 11 home here. Yeah. 
okay so we're all done with this so obviously for windows please look at like what you need to do that's not the machine we're working on today um and docker so we have to download and install docker which is our final um okay let's see let's see if this works so do we come and install docker yeah seems to be working okay now to check docker version docker version 20 cool so we have all of this set up to build all distributions of open search run this okay so now when you want to run it obviously you want to be inside the open search directory and this is the gradle w that will be running all of these commands um gradle w assemble will take a while to run so let me just start it to show you guys but essentially what this will do is it will create like the different distributions um so all the different distributions that we support uh which could be like darwin windows all of them will be there under the distribution folder in archives so that's what is mentioned here and if you just want to run on your own platform, then this is what you can run. Um, but I think for now, anyways, we don't really need the distribution. So let me just cut this short. Um, what else? Gradle check. Okay, so Gradle check is important because every time you are making any uh, PR, uh, you're opening like a pull request to the main repository, which is open search. You will make your local changes, your git commit on your uh, fork of open search. And before you open a PR, it's recommend that you run like a Gradle check by yourself on your machine. So this will run the whole suite of tests, which anyways gets run every time that you submit a pull request. But this will just save you time because if the Gradle check doesn't pass, then you're not going to get an approval to merge in anyways. So we need a complete passing Gradle check for it to be merged in. Um, sometimes there are some flaky errors, so you might have to rerun it. But yeah, so a smaller set that most people do run is Gradle W pre-commit. So this is just like a smaller set of tests, um, which are sort of like, I guess, what you would call like the minimum set of tests. So if this fails, there's no point in running like that whole thing. You could just try this first before you run Gradle check. And Gradle run is obviously to start like an open search instance. So if Gradle run is running, then you can do like a curl local host to check. This is where it will be running. This is the address that it runs on by default, unless you set something else. So you can always curl local host to check if open search is running. I guess we could try that. So if you do Gradle W run. And let me just open another so that we can check. Yeah, but I think that's pretty much it. Um, these will be like all of the commands that you'll be using most often. The editor that we recommend is IntelliJ. This is the one that I'm using as well. Um, of course, you feel free to use whichever um, editor that you prefer. Um, these are just a few of them that have some instructions on how it might be easier for you to use those. And this is just uh, some more information about how the repos split up and all the different modules inside of it. Um, so yeah, like I said, I think it's always useful for you to go through all of this documentation for open search, especially because it's such a huge code base. So this really helps you to navigate everything and everything that's happening. Um, yeah. 
is getting set up but um i think whenever i see this is when i know that the whole like it started it says recovered indices into cluster state and now if you go here and you do call local host 9200 yeah you can see that it's set up and this is the cluster name this is the cluster uuid which is like its unique id um and yeah you can see like the build type and everything here so I hope this was useful, but obviously you can always reach out to either me, Rishikesh or Kunal if you have any more questions on setting up or installing. Um, so yeah, thanks.